here on the eve of the global reset, which is on and popping, we're about to see something that we have never seen in history before. Years ago, a friend of mine by the name of David, we had this conversation and we both agreed there could not be two Americas in the world. There could not be two large economies that consume as much as we're doing. Well, guess what? In the next few years, we're going to see that. The GDP for the United States is about $20 trillion. The GDP for China is 15 and growing. We've kind of slowed down and China is growing and growing and growing. And what we're going to see, because China has a lot of issues right now. Uh, a lot of their people are tired because they have from nine to nine. They work from nine in the morning to 9 p.m. And a lot of their, once again, the same group of people, the millennials, they're, they're tired of it. And they're having some backlash with their country, which could stall some of their progress. But I have a feeling based on the fact that China is the world's manufacturing basket, they're going to get there. So we're going to see two 20, 20 something trillion dollar economies. We're going to see two massive economies that are consuming so many resources in the world. China is consuming resources because they manufacture and make some stuff. I ordered a machine that was made in China. And the reason I, I'll tell you why I ordered it from China here in the United States, these machines cost like $30,000. I got it from China for 2,500. So it's a tool. Cause let me go ahead and tell you, I'm thinking about getting into manufacturing once again, before I start any other business, I am going to do my due diligence. So I ordered this machine just to see how it's going to work out. Because before I go ahead and invest another $400,000 in something, I'm actually going to be sure of the business model. So one of the things that we're going to happen, well, what is what I, what I feel, let me go ahead and play this scenario out for you. I feel that the way that China's growing, five years, they're going to have the world's largest economy. And then it's going to be an Asian economy, the United States, and then another Asian economy. For a long, long time, the world's second largest economy was Japan. And Japan sits right in third place above Germany. So if you would look at China, Japan, and Germany, what do they do? They make stuff. This is why Germany it has the highest GDP after um, Japan is because they make stuff. And the United States in the 1950s, Detroit was the world's second largest economy in the 1950s. So the first economy was Japan, was the United States. And the second largest economy was Detroit because we used to make stuff. And this is kind of why I'm toying around with becoming a manufacturer and a maker of stuff because it's wide open. It's wide open. Right now, the United States has abdicated its responsibility to make stuff. But looking at what is going on, um, I feel that manufacturing is going to come back to the United States. And why, why do I feel that? One of the reasons is a lot of people are like, I ordered this thing, which came from China and it was shipped DHL and it, I ordered it. It took a week to get here from China, wherever it was made in China to here. It took a week. Now I think it was like five or six days. So it was really quick shipping from China, but what beats quick shipping from China, quicker shipping from the United States, overnight shipping, I feel, and this is going to be an opportunity for those who want to get into manufacturing. And when you say manufacturing, I'm like, whatever, wallets, handbags, shoes, whatever. Because here's the thing, Yeezys are the ugliest shoes I have ever seen. 
And these ugly shoes have made Kanye West a billionaire. Let me say this again. These ugly ass shoes have made Kanye West a billionaire. Here's the thing. And uh, there's someone that I'm working with on their business. And I'm like, you know, maybe you can move your price point up because here, here's the thing. There seems to be a market for any and everything. And uh, I ordered these wallets just to check them out. It's called King's Loot. And they started making wallets in 2019. And the company has just grown. They're making wallets. Like, you don't really think about a wallet, but you need a wallet to organize because uh, they have RDIF protection, which means that someone can't run a scanner and get your credit card information through your wallet because they're protected against that. That's the wallet that I've been rocking for the last six, seven years. And I got this wallet off Kickstarter. It was a Kickstarter. So I'm thinking about getting into manufacturing. I'm thinking about getting into a clothing brand. And that's something I've been thinking about because as I look at China and I look at the United States, the United States economy is based on service. That's why it grows, you know, restaurants, hotels, grocery stores and stuff. We have a very much service based economy, but I'm looking at Japan, at China's, China's economy, which is steadily growing. It's because they make stuff. And I, you know, and because I'm a student of history, I can look back when we used to make stuff. We used to make some stuff. This is when our economy was booming. I was listening to this guy, Reventure Consulting, Reventure Consulting. And he was talking about how housing prices correlated with dramatic income growth. As people's income grew, the price of houses. If you didn't know, in 1960, the average house was twice the American income. So if you made $5,000, your house cost you 10 to 12,000. This went on for a long time. And then we have entered this phase where the typical price of a house isn't twice or even three times your income. You know, if the typical price of a house was three times your annual salary, that would be awesome. What I tell you guys, 80% of the people in the United States of America are making $35,000 a year or less. So the average home price is 10 to 12 times the average wage. That is unsustainable. I don't see a lot of people starting to make a lot of money very quickly. I don't see that. I don't see that happening. So what is going to happen, what is going to happen is a correction or a collapse of the real estate market. Once again, I don't feel this collapse is going to be really that long. But going back to two Americas, we have America and we have China. And it's gonna be real interesting to have two economies that are consuming so much. And I feel that this is gonna create a dramatic supply chain issue for both the United States and for China. Because China, like, well, China don't, China don't care about its environment. China, China don't care. So that kind of gives them the advantage to go ahead and create all of these factories and pollute their environment. And also I feel that China is gonna be hit with uh, environmentalists. It's just a matter of time before they come and they hit China over the head because China, China's like China's environment is trash. It is really trash because there's so they're they're so about they're about so they're so much about growing their economy, creating more products, putting stuff out. They really don't care. So at some point, I feel that as the Chinese population matures and they get more activists they're going to push back on the government and here it's going to be interesting because i feel the global reset is going to impact so many americans because i'm looking we're going to have 
massive neighborhoods of rental houses because like apartments, um, it was, it's kind of funny. I was visiting someone and I don't have a normal size apartment because I, I was visiting some friends who live in an apartment and I was like, damn, this place is small and it's a two bedroom, but in a small and I am seeing that with the work at home movement that people are going to want to have more space. I've had a dedicated home office as long as I can remember. I'm in a three bedroom apartment by myself. One bedroom is the bedroom and one room is the office and another room is another has an un, unidentified purpose, which I haven't started to use it for. <clears throat> but this is as small as I'm going to go. And uh, I'm, I'm thinking about <laughs> moving to something a little larger. I don't know. I don't know. I got to look at it. But with the massive work at home movement or quote working remote, people are going to want to have space. They're going to want to have a space where they can do work and they're going to have a space where they can live. Because one of the things that has kept me sane is I've had definite defined spaces. I work, I work in here and I live over here. Like, well, for me, work life balance just kind of blends all up together because, um, I really don't care. It doesn't bother me because right now I'm in what would be considered, I guess this would be considered the dining room area, but I don't have a dining table because it doesn't make sense for me to have a dining table when I eat at the counter all the time. So I don't, I'm not going to buy a dining table, but it's going to be very interesting to see two massive economies. And this will be the first time in history that this has ever happened. And we're going to see which economy wins. It's going to be because with America, we've have the amazing ability to pull it out the mud, to, to pull it out in the seventh inning, the bottom of the ninth, then someone will hit a grand slam home run in the bottom of the ninth. That's just the American way. So I feel that this race is going to be tight. I feel it's going to be contested. And I feel that we're going to have two $20 trillion economies within the next five years. And here's something that I know that's going to be really, really crazy. Years ago, when I was in the military, Germans loved Cadillacs. There was a guy who told me a story. Uh, he was in the military. And if you're in the military, they ship your cars to wherever you're going to go for free. And he got his Cadillac and everywhere he went, he had German men like how much for the car? I will buy your car. I will buy your car. So this is why I feel that manufacturing is going to be a, coming back to America to make something in America and export it. Cause that's kind of like one of my future plans. I want to make a product that I can export around the world, not just sell it here, but sell it in, you know, China, Korea, Europe, just sell it all over the place because, and that's going to bring a whole new level of complexity to my business. Cause when you get to exporting, you've got tariffs, you've got all kinds of things that you have to worry about. But once again, Rolex isn't made here in the United States. Louis Levant, Louis, Louis Levantin, Louis Levant, Louis Vuitton isn't made in the United States. Uh, Mercedes isn't made in the, well, actually Mercedes, some Mercedes are made here and some BMWs are made here. That was one of the things that they did because when they were pushing all of these tariffs, BMW, um, Mercedes Benz, Kia, and I think what's the other, what's the other Korean Hyundai. I think they all have stateside factories. So, they make the products here to avoid the tariffs. You can't charge a tariff on a domestically produced product. But yeah, uh, this is something that I'm going to be talking about because uh, I've decided to keep my office. If you know, or you've been keeping up, when I started the car rental business, I had to get an office because I needed the parking lot. And I'm probably going to keep that office and I'm going to hire some employees and put them in there with this machine. So. 
we got a lot of stuff that's coming up, but once again, I feel that manufacturing, if you can come up with something, you can make something and you can create it and then you can put it out into the marketplace, I feel that's gonna be a viable big win for the next 50 years. Why? Because we don't, we have an absence of American manufacturers. I'll give you an example. How many of you remember Solo Flex? Solo Flex. They used to come on these commercials and you would see this guy and he was working out. It's this exercise machine with these big rubber bands to provide persistence, right? I Googled them the other day. They're still in business. And then I went through my process of researching a website and they get 50,000 hits a month. Solaflex. Yeah, Solaflex, right? And I started crunching some numbers and if they get 3% of the people who are visiting their website, it is like, I forget exactly, but I think 3% came up to, um, let me see, can I, can I do this? Hold on a second. Okay. Uh, let me go to the website because I want to give you guys factual and the accurate information versus just uh, going off of my top of my head. So it's very important. Solaflex is running Google ads. Okay. So the price of a Solaflex machine is that. That's the price of the Solaflex machine, right? So, $24.50. If 3% of the people who are hitting their website buys, that represents $1,500. Okay. Times two, four, five. That's $3.6 million a month times 12. It's 44 million, almost 50 million. That's an incredibly successful company. If they're only converting 3%, like if they're converting um, 2%, 1,500 times, let's see, 50, because their only website's only getting like 50,000 views. Minus two, 50,000 minus 2%. That's 1,000. So let's say they're converting just 2% times 2,450, 2.4 million. So once again, like maybe some of you remember Solaflex when they used to run the ads on the television and all of that, but this is a manufacturing company here in America that's doing between two and $3 million per month. They're actually making this machine here and shipping it. I don't know if they're shipping it internationally. I don't know, I'll have to look into that. But once again, I'm really thinking about getting my hands dirty and getting into some manufacturing because it's wide open. It's wide open. And once again, you know, years and years ago, <clears throat> when I was in the storage auction business, there was a company next to me called Torve, and they manufactured sex toys. They made all the stuff in-house. They had the machine, they had the leather, they made the riding crops. <clears throat> and I think they're still in business. So I feel, let's call it craft manufacturing. I feel that that's gonna be a hot, 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 hot industry for anyone that's willing to invest in building some type of manufacturing facility whether it's clothing, like I've, how many brands do you see here on YouTube or Instagram? And they're not household brands, but they're making the owner a million a year. Once again, uh, there's many, many different things. Cause like I said, I'm getting ready to roll off into some other stuff, make some stuff hot, sexy. But I feel because China, China, is the manufacturing basket, and not just the United States, but pretty much the world outside of Germany. Germany makes a lot of stuff. Germany makes a lot of machines. 
They make a lot of uh, manufacturing components. They make a lot of tools. They make cars. Germany, this is why Germany is the world's fourth largest economy because they make stuff. And once again, in this race of who's going to have the largest economy in the next five years, I feel that if you participate in manufacturing of something, making something, setting something up, I mean, you could be building birdhouses. How many times have you gone to Bass Pro Shop and you see all of this stuff in the Bass Pro Shop? Somebody's gotta make that. Some of that stuff is made here. A lot of it's made in China, but some of it's made here. And if you could go ahead and put together something and have it made here, and sell it, I feel that you can become a millionaire. And in some cases, depending upon how many people like, here's this thing. Uh, I'm, I'm about to show you something that's kind of stupid. Okay. That thing has been out since I was a kid. Let's see, invent it. Like once again, this thing is, it has been out since I was a young man. The big mouth Billy Bass was invented in 1998. This thing has been selling 2008, 2018, this thing has been selling for 26 years. 26, like, it's a toy. It's a toy. So I just showed you two things. Let's see, where is it made? It's probably Singing Bass is made, where is it? It's made here. The Singing, Big mouth, how a robotic singing fish made a hundred million dollars in one year. See what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? I'm going to show it to you. hundred million in one year. Manufacturing, man. So I'm going to be on a different tactic, a different tip here. But once again, there's so much opportunity as the United States and China are entering into this informal war to economic dominance, because what this is gonna represent as China grows and their GDP goes up, guess what happens to the incomes of their citizens? They go up. So it's gonna be my intention to create a product that I can sell in China, that I can sell in Japan, that I could sell in Korea, that I could sell all over the world. That's one of the things I'm working on because manufacturing is the key. Like I just showed you, this little silly singing fish made someone a hundred milli in one year. In one year. In one year. And don't even get me on, don't even get me on talking about Hello Kitty. Hello Kitty's been around for decades and it's made billions. So once again, let's go ahead and examine what's happening in the United States and what's happening in China. Because um, one of the things that you will have is abundant opportunity to participate in this. Because I'm gonna participate in it, because you know, uh, one of the things that I have learned, one of the things that I've learned from my recent exploits is to do my research before I jump into anything. I would recommend that you do your research because I tried to do research in the car rental business and all these lying ass YouTubers who weren't putting out factual information. And also, if you notice, all of the YouTubers who were putting out these Toro videos, most of them have disappeared. They stopped putting out videos. I wonder why. I wonder why. So one of the things that we have to understand is there's going to be so much opportunity for business. There's going to be so much opportunity for those who want to create something, who want to build something, who
who want to take on the uh, situation of being a, in, an inventor, a founder, and putting together a manufacturing concern. There's gonna be so much opportunity in that space. There's so much opportunity. Like, once again, Yeezys, ugliest shoes I ever seen. Kanye a billionaire. A singing fish. A little toy, you press the button and it starts singing. 100 million in a year. It only sells for $44. That's a lot of those singing fish. It takes 10 to get to 400. It takes 100 to get to 1,000. So once again, um, we're going to see some stuff during this global reset and during this economy race that we're, we're, we're in it. We're, we're, we're in an economy race against Japan and not Japan, China. And it's going to be deep. It's going to be deep because when the economies change, it's going to change a lot of stuff because if you get to the point where you get on the manufacturing side, the producer side, the creative side, then who knows what you, where you can end up. But as long as you stay in the J-O-B side, I feel that due to, let's say in five years, the United States and, Japan, and China switch. That's going to mean that American incomes are already stagnant. They're going to go down and it's going to be harder to make it. So once again, you need to be about trying to start something to build something because that's going to be the future. That's going to be where we're going to start cooking with gas. Let me know your thoughts and opinions. I will see you guys in the next one.